quantitatively for for companies that I do not know yet, mm -hmm. um, then uh, I will just look at their cash flow statement for the last 10, 20 years. <laughs> then you you see number one, do they pay tax? A lot of these scams they don't pay tax one. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. I mean, you scam it, it's difficult to pay tax huh? yeah. <laughs> so on the scam itself. So, yeah. so the tax rate will be very low on non-existent. Yeah, there are too many of them. Like I know for us, Chartal Modern. You go and take a look in the past ten years, they don't pay tax one. Ah. So, uh, okay. Then uh, number two, they, they say they make a lot of money, the lot of cash, do they pay dividend consistently? Mm. Mm, and mm. Do, number three, do they raise new equity financing or debt? Yeah. Mm. I mean, you have so much cash, why the hell do you need more <laughs> yeah. more cash and more or more debt oh, and all this? Right. Right. So, so. Before we begin the podcast, have you gotten your free ebook? It's called the Build a Six Figure Portfolio Guidebook. Now, inside it, we share with you the tips and tricks to bring your stock investing skills to the next level. The best part, it's only 10 pages long and it's totally free. Whether you're on Spotify or YouTube, the link to download is in the description or you can go to www.firl.co slash f-r-e-e or www.firl.co slash free. Okay, guys, welcome to yet another Blockbuster podcast. Um, why Blockbuster? Because today we have another legit fund manager and we're going to bring on a lot more fund managers as well. So just a, an intro, right? So this man, he started out his career at, well, auditing, essentially. Then he later moved on to film asset management. If you don't know who film asset management uh, are, they are probably one of the most longest running and well-known, well-established yeah. asset management firms in Malaysia. Then he moved on to Attica. And uh, as of five to six years ago, he became the CIO, Chief Investment Officer of Oaklands Oakl Oakl Path <laughs> Capital. Welcome to the podcast, Sichai. Hi, good morning. All right, awesome. Now, I'm going to go straight into it, right? Why did you get interested in investing and subsequently why did you decide to make the switch from auditing into fund management? So the first question. Um, I read the books about Buffett in mm -hmm. Mandarin when I was uh, 16 years old. Oh. Yeah. So um, my brother bought the book but he never read I guess. Uh. So <laughs> he just left it there. <laughs> la. Yeah. I assume so, he's not doing fund management now. He's a broker. Yeah. Okay, pretty close. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what happened that is that uh, when I read that, then I I feel very excited mm. about the whole thing, the story, his story, and all this. Then I try to learn about investing. Then um, initially looking at the chart and all this, after a while, I found that it doesn't suit me. So I continue to learn about value investing mm -hmm. in whichever way that I can. Mm. Then when the time comes that I need to go to university. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, okay, my family can afford me to go to UCD. So in the okay. end, I didn't go. So uh -huh. my brother just told me, why don't you take accounting? Because you can work in the day. You can, and then you can go and study in the evening. So mm -hmm. there's an ACCA kind of oh, study. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think oh, so you didn't the, go for uni, but you... ACCA, yeah? the uh, professional path? Yeah. So it's, yeah, evening and the weekend class. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I took it up. Then I also feel that hey, it's very useful for you, for investment. Of course. Mm -hmm. Analysis and all this. Uh, so I sort of like it, yeah. Right. But I don't like accounting. Yeah. So um, oh, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> it, yeah. So then, um, so what? I joined audit firm. So work in the day and then in the night just uh, study. And then um, at the at the age of twenty, then I started an accounting firm with my friends. We are all twenty years old at the time, all young men. So we think that there's no risk up with this way. Yeah. Mm. So we started an accounting firm. Then we run it. Two over years later, I decided to quit. So. Uh -huh. And they, they carry on and they are I think they are very successful by now. So um, then for me is that I quit because uh, I think I want to be a farm manager. Okay. Mm. So it, it was 2009 and it's very challenging uh, time. There was a... Uh, right after the crisis, right? Yeah. Yeah. Three months after the crisis bottom. So this uh, June 2009. 
So I want to since I want to do this, uh, so how? Because uh, you, I, I, I don't know how at that time. At that time, I didn't know how other people join this industry. Mm. So for me, is that I think okay, I don't have a proper university degree. Uh, some people, pe- those people, maybe they, they have I- Ivy League or something. Mm. And then second is that uh, I don't have family background also. Okay. So, <laughs> so in in short, is uh the only way is try lah. Mm. So uh, that I was in Singapore at that time, so I sent out resume to two hundred companies. Wow. But almost no feedback. Right? Oh, <laughs> so, international and Malaysians and I Singapore. target Singapore company. That I see. Is it because of the lack of degree? You think? Uh, what's your reason? I, 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 I now I feel that it's probably due to the crisis. Uh, uh, so everyone uh, don't want sense. to hire also uh, mm, at mm. the time. Uh. So, and then um, so what else I can do? So is uh, I decided maybe I should walk in. Uh. Mm. So I selected sixty company. Then I spend five days, walk into them one by one, ask them to hire me. So, <laughs> wow. Great. So, uh, so out of the 60, um, three company, I'm more keen because they are value investment value style. Yeah, so yeah. I'll keep them at the last day. Uh. Then um, after going through the whole 60 company using over five days, uh, actually no one want to hire me. Okay. Mm. So, but then the last... Two or last one that I went is a film asset. Then, mm. uh, wow. then Dr. Tan wasn't there. Yeah. Oh, Dr. So, Tan wasn't there. Yeah. So I told the, the receptionist that uh, I'm here, blah, 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 and all this. Then um, then I sent an email to, 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 to them. Mm. And then a week later, surprisingly, Dr. Tan replied. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I still remember that email. He, said, he personally replied you. Yeah. Wow. I still remember he said, um, I'm not going to hire you but we can have lunch ah <laughs> okay so, so okay i mean for me is i should go la. so yeah of, yeah, course, of course so, of course. Yeah. so that's how it started then we keep meeting each other for like over a period like three months or something like i that. see i see yeah, then uh yeah so in about by about um, september he, he asked me to, to to work for him but then uh, if i were to work for him i have to go to kl ah yeah, that's how i end up in kl yeah I see, I see. So you met him in Singapore all this while? Yeah. Time. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I, I started in this industry. Yeah. So let me dial back a little bit before we move on, right? So you started off with a book about Warren Buffett. You read it in Mandarin. And then later on, you met Dr. Tan, right? Now, what do you learn from these two individuals? What are the biggest learning lessons? Um, from Buffett is... um. I would say maybe I learned the truth of investing. Mm-hmm. So you can go even call it uh, the law of investment. Mm. Wow. So um, that's how I look at it and that's how I practice it. Then for Dr. Tan, is, uh, he is uh, more market savvy. Mm. Um, he tell me several times that like, Chai, you got to smell the market. Wow. Yeah. So that's something that I, I try to learn but I don't think I learned it well. <laughs> so it's very non scientific. <laughs> right? uh, well, is you can maybe you can say it's a uh, experience and also yeah, the yeah. character, personality, everything. Yeah. So mm. for me, I'm slightly more tilted towards a uh, buffer buffer way. Right. Say, mm. yeah. Right. So we will go into uh, these laws that you mentioned a little bit later. But besides these two individuals. Um, are there any other inspirations or slash mentors that you've had in the past? Yeah, I, I have three now. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, other than Buffett, which is maybe he's um, many people mentors, I guess. He's yeah. everyone's yeah. mentor. Yeah. So, uh, I have three individuals, um, like a guy is called Yi Hui and uh, Gia Seng and a guy called uh, Bernard Tan. Okay. The three of them, uh, so sort of like, I ask them a lot of things uh, from time to time and then through them uh, I learn a lot. Huh? Mm, okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So we, we definitely the way to find out we the way we're gonna find out what you learn is really <laughs> we're gonna ask you now, right? What is your investing philosophy? Because I, I read a little bit about on Oakland, yeah. right? How you look at investments, but I want to hear from your words. What is the Sachai investment philosophy? The if, if the philosophy actually evolve, mm. Mm. so I try we try to improve every year, okay, or every day. <laughs> Hopefully that this year we are better investor than last year. Mm. Mm. So 
at this point, I have summed it up to something like this. So we, we, we look at business. The first thing that I look at is the people. Mm. So the the businessman, we are investor. The businessman is the jockey that yeah. steer the horse. So in the race, the jockey, if he is a good one, mm. he can win the race. Mm. But then in this case, it says the jockey will also have to decide where the prize money of the race go go to. I see. So the jockey can decide, say that, oh, he wants to take uh, it all for himself. Or he wants he want to place other bet. Yeah. Mm, so he right. can do any, anything. So in ultimately, we as a minority investor, we rely on them to do two, fa- two things for us. Okay. Number one, to run the business well, to steal the horse well. Number two, after the money is made, distribute it to us or reinvest sensibly. Mm. So this is all about integrity mm. and also honor-oriented mindset. Mm. Yeah. So for someone with integrity, if he own 10% of the company, the other one, he won't go and take money from the other 90%. Mm. For someone without integrity, he own 90% of the company, every day you think about how to eat life and the last 10%. <laughs> right. so, so in, in the end, if, if we are trader, if we trade certain stock for one, two weeks, one, two months and all this, uh, then probably it matter less. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But if you invest in company for three, five, 10, 20 years, mm-hmm. long term, everything's a phase. So uh, that's why that is the first criteria. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we often see company that power on cash in their balance sheet more yes. and more. Yes. Okay. They run the business well. They are good jockey. But when the cash come in, they don't know how to reinvest. Uh, and they are not willing to pay up dividends. Some they pay a little bit up and all this. So in the end, become a cash power that uh, actually reduce the ROE over time. Mm, it mm. turns uh, probably a great ROE business into a low uh, it be low ROE business via holding. Okay, okay let, me, let me stop you there. Use an interesting word, which is ROE. Yeah. Right. So why is it preferable for an investor to find a company that has higher ROE. Uh, okay, I, I should say usually it's ROC, mm. which will be all. I right. we also take into account the debt portion that they put in. Sure. Yeah. So basically, um, a higher business. Okay, we want to buy great business. Yeah. Mm. So great business. One clear definition definition is that it, it will have a high ROC. Yeah. Return on capital employed. Uh, consistently higher than other people because cap- capitalism will turn luxury into commodities. Mm. So. If if industry or company is making too much money, very mm. high ROC on certain things, other will come in and compete. Competition. So to to protect that, you certainly need to have a very strong mode. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So when you find such company, sustainable, durable mode, mm-hmm. uh, with a high ROC, better say with it. Yeah. Yeah. So back to the to the philosophy thing. So the number one uh, is this uh, integrity mm. of the management. Uh, on your on a oriented approach. Mm. Then the second is also about the people. Mm. Is uh we want the management to have a progressive mindset. Mm. Right. To think about how to improve the business, improve themselves, how to grow the business when when these revenue sources already max out. They are maxed out in this industry. How are they going to grow further? So they have to spend R- R- on R and D or they have to do something ahead. Mm. Yeah. So otherwise the company will stop growing. Mm. We are fine with companies that do not grow, but in that case, they better pay out 100% mm. of their cash flow because there's no point mm. of holding weight. So this, you can say is a bit selfish from our investor point of view versus management, but um, from from a rational capitalism point of view, that's how it should be. La. Understand. Yeah. Right. Um, so number three, we touched on just now, the philosophy. One is on, so it's on the moat on the computer advantage. Okay. So it's, this thing is cutting off. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's dropping. Okay. <laughs> okay. So sorry about that. Um, number three is about the, the moat. Or com- they, we can call it computer sure. advantage of the business. Yeah. So it, it can come from many areas. It can be network effect. It can be certain franchise, certain brandings. Uh. Brandings is like as simple as your Rolex brand and all this. Uh. So, it can come from low cost advantage, consistently mm. lower cost operator in certain things because of the structure or supply chain advantage. So, mm. so the mode can come from many things. So Facebook will be coming from network. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Effect, yeah. 
So I think we all understand that. So, um, but there are certain modes that coming from technology advantage. Mm. Mm. No, it could be coming like ASML mm. that uh, do the auto lithographic machines. Yeah. So we we as an investor, we probably won't understand many of them. Yeah? Sure. Some, some of them we won't be able to identify. So we have to stick with, to us, identifier things mm. within our circle competence. Then, uh, then we stick with it, mm. identify it, make sure that it's, it's there, it's durable. Mm. Yeah. And then you have progressive management that keep thinking about how to enhance it. Yeah. I see. What would you deem as industries that uh, Oakland is more, uh, what do you call it? You prefer to invest yeah, in. Yeah, you prefer to invest in. Any industries that, that you prefer? Um, okay, we prefer not to invest in a certain industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for example, um, usually it's con contractor type of, type of business. Okay. Um, construction type of business. Okay. Uh, or very low value added business. I see. Uh, very low RE companies. So trading so, and all that, you rather not most trading companies. Well. Most, yeah. yeah. Most. Unless it's a full fresh distribution okay. uh, channels, which they control the channel. Okay. So it, it will be slightly different. Yeah? I see. So, um, and also, I, I cannot tell you what we prefer mm. certain industry because uh, when the opportunity arises, uh, we ah, see a when very right. high certainty of gain. Mm very high probability with a very high gain. Mm. So we have very high expected value, then we will go for it if you can understand it. Understand. So, so but, why, but I know what I don't want. Okay, yeah, yeah please, yeah. what you don't want. Yeah, like construction. Which I told you, yeah. uh, low RE business, uh, and then the uh, construction, and then company with question, questionable management. Okay. So I see people, uh, sometimes they want to trade certain stocks, they say on oh, the management, oh, we all know the management is very lousy, but it's okay, <laughs> we'll trade the stock, yeah. Okay. I cannot do it. Oh. I just I just, can, I just cannot do it. So <laughs> I, I, I I when I look at the mansion, uh, I f when I don't think it's good one, I, I don't even want to touch the share. Great. So, yeah. Yeah. On on the management run, right? How how do you assess them in such a way? In in a way, is it just from reading? Do you do you make it a point that unless and until you meet them, only then you assess management? Uh, I use um, probably you can say two ways. One okay. is the track record. Okay. Track, track record of how they run the business. So if for uh, you you can you can, if it's just an IPO then you can try to check on the SSM and all right, these things. Right. Mm, mm. So and then the uh, track record speak a lot. Mm. Then second is talk to the competitor. Ah. Uh, so discuss with the competitor. Uh, how 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 is it? How is it? Uh, on various areas of the business. I see. Then uh, go and ask the competitor. Um, who do you think is the best in this industry and why? Mm. And then uh, then then you try to use this factor to to weigh it. Uh. I see. Then um. Third is, uh, if you possible, uh, talk to people that are, they know them. It can, it can be supplier, it can be uh, customer, mm. and, all, and all this. Uh. So you try to understand how they behave over, mm. over a period of time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So um, you mentioned, let's, let's dial back a bit uh, about competitive advantage, right? And I know you break it down on your website. So I'm just going to go through each one of them and then you explain a little bit more about what these competitive advantages uh, are. So you s mentioned just now about Facebook and network effect. So maybe explain to us a little bit more about why is network effect considered a competitive advantage? Um, it's because if you are on Facebook, all your friends are on Facebook, mm. tomorrow I go and start a company called, let's say, Google+. Plus. Mm. Then I ask you to to try. Mm. Maybe you want. Maybe you don't mind. Okay, and try Google Plus. Yeah. But then your friend don't want to try. So after a while, you found that there's not. It's not happening. There, there's nothing. So that's network effect. Mm, right. <laughs> so it's um difficult to convince everyone to switch together. So now now we all know that this uh, WhatsApp has a big privacy issue and all this, um. And then um. We read news that Telegram gain a lot of user mm. because of that, and then we read news that Signal gain a lot of user because of that. Yeah. Uh, but my personal experience is that people are still using WhatsApp, so mm. maybe they go and download Telegram, they go and download <laughs> Signal, and they go and download that Line, uh, Kakao Talk, and all these. Uh, but at least the region that I live in, people yeah. somehow still is using WhatsApp, even despite they know the the privacy concern and all mm. these things. Yeah, that is also network effect. Mm. So their business is sur surrounding. It will affect. Mm. Okay. 
So that's network effect. And then the next one is lowest cost operator. So explain a little bit more. So you mean if they can sell things cheaper than everyone else, that's a mode? Uh, certainly. So mm-hmm. for example, in the US, we can do a Costco. Mm-hmm. So they always provide the best value mm-hmm. to, to the customer. In mm-hmm. Singapore, a company called Sheng Shong. Sheng Shong Cao Shi. So this some company, amazingly mm-hmm. run company, probably, I, I think they are probably the, I cannot, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I think they are probably the highest uh, PPT margins uh, supermarket operator in the world. Wow. <laughs> so it, it is a cost advantage. Mm. So um, durable, persistent cost, cost advantage. Then um, if you are mar- manufacturers, um, if you always have a cost advantage against a competitor mm. by a couple percentage point, yeah. Mm. And there's a company called Issue File. They, they, they consistently has this cost advantage against all the competitors in country like UK. Yeah. So this over a 15 year period eliminated everyone else. Mm. Uh, almost, I can't, I, we cannot say it's like dominant or yeah. monopoly, but it's almost eliminated. So everywhere. what does an Asia file do? Maybe you can share with us. Oh, they, they, they make files, they make papers. Um, they mm. um, also uh, produce a uh, footwear. Mm. Yeah. So there's a plastic footwear and uh, containers and all those stuff. Yeah. So it is, uh, you can say it is a manufacturing business mm. with a bit of certain line of the business is branding. Mm. But mm-hmm. overall, it is um, extremely efficient operator because they, they think about how to design their online, mm. how to improve and enhance the processes, fabricate certain parts online and then mm. and then look look at other people's production line, mm. how to beat them and all this. Uh. So in the end, the, the cost is uh, extremely low. I see. Yeah. So, I, see. I mean, uh, there, are, there are many businesses uh, are run like that. So, mm. a lot of Taiwanese businesses also run mm. in that in that manner. Mm. Like Foxconn, yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm not saying that it's a great company. I just think that the, they have some cost advantage there. Yeah, that's why they, they survive. How, uh, in, in your experience, since we brought up about this cost advantage, uh, when we look at businesses that are very commoditized in business, right? How long do you give them before uh, you know that they can be a leader? Because like EMS producers like like Foxconn, right? Then you start seeing guys like Winstron, Pegatron all coming in and trying to eat up their market share. And the only thing they fight off is cost, right? H- how do these guys actually survive survive in the long term? And do you see that as a disadvantage? So, okay, if we... Maybe we we, we, we can we can talk about this, uh, our glove maker here. Ah, mm. great. You, you, you see, they... How, how do they achieve the lowest possible cost? Mm. They end up designing their online, fabricate their online, engineer and then, uh, their and own, and they, um, their own processes, yeah. and then the their own uh, chemical formulations, yeah. and every other thing is about re- cost reduction, improving productivity, efficiency. So, but then this this is a game of a continuous mm. because you you improve your competitor also improve right. Mm, so mm. you have to keep running one two step ahead of others on on the way. Now mm. move the cost down. Yeah. yeah. So that's why the management progressiveness, the thinking about R and D, all these come into picture. Mm. Yeah, it's a continuous thing. It's, you cannot stay there. I see. I see. So the management must. What you want to see is signs that the management is on the pulse and they they are constantly just optimizing their cost lah in a way. Yes. Okay. Okay. Next, powerful branding. Yeah, it's very different from cost advantage. Yes. It's a franchise, right? <laughs> so. Uh, usually when you say branding franchise, we are talking about consumer facing ca- company. Mm. It's just like why people will choose to buy certain luxury cars or certain luxury items, and the price go up, they somehow they buy more. Yeah? Mm. So powerful branding franchise uh, they build up over the years is how how do you build a successful powerful branding? Mm. I in my view, it is a it's through numerous experiences mm. with your customer. Mm. So every day you deal with the customer, whether via email, via marketing, they test the user products and feedback, they complain, blah, blah, blah. Everything. So millions and millions and years after years of this kind of experiences and changes, mm. they build out the brand, they build out the franchise. So people are comfortable with the brand, with, with, with this thing. So when you... Even if it's as simple as if you go to supermarket and you buy certain uh, 
I think everyone will be different. But mm. then for certain FMGG products, some someone will just stick to Milo. Mm. Someone, some some people will just stick to Maggie mm. or, or something. So so that that is a branding effect there. So when it comes to milk powder, I think a lot of people like to buy Enfagro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so I I think that that speak for the branding. And then you say pricing. Oh, it's so much so much more expensive. Yeah. But then yeah. yet people still buy. Yeah. So uh so branding is a right to price a product higher is a bargaining power. Mm. Um is is it is a mode. Right. Yeah. But how to make it durable and consistent uh consistent mm. that you have to man- continuously enhance your customer experience through the every day to day the kind of exchanges interaction with them. Mm. Alright. Interesting. Yeah. So now uh th- this next one is quite interesting, which is ecosystem. Mm. Ecosystem is a switching cost, right? So um like I I think Apple is a very easy one to understand <laughs> yeah. because uh, uh you want to switch out it is it's it's quite troublesome nowadays because everything is tied tied with it. Yeah. Then if, if you use a phone, if you use a watch, if you use a computer, they work seamlessly together. Correct. Then um the app that you work on your phone somehow also can continuously work on your this uh MacBook and then to and fro. So the, the ecosystem itself um tie the customer out also to mm, certain extent. Mm, mm. And then um yeah, now in, in uh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Let me think of another what about Chinese companies? Ten cents, for example. Yeah. It's it's also the overall ecosystem of the business where people use a uh, multiple of the basic ecosystem means people use multiple of their product mm, and services right. and all these products and services basically they sort of uh, interrelated with each other mm. then then it make the switching cost higher mm. for the consumer to a, switch a good away. example with Bloomberg yeah. right the Bloomberg terminal is that is that one yeah that is a close to one so we, we yeah. all we all use it and then uh, um it's expensive and then uh, yeah. this uh Uncle Bloomberg is one of the richest guys yeah, in the yeah, world. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, there is a close, so you want your ecosystem to be close look. Uh. Yeah. So this one, in iPhone, all their software and all these things are entirely different. Yeah. All right. Okay, so the last one that you stated was technological advantage. Now, this is quite interesting because we've had chats with some people about modes before. Yeah. And what they consistently bring up, I think Buffett brings this up also is that Technology is not really an advantage, right? Because what he said was, yeah, the technology might be the forefront innovation or that, but a lot of great companies have died in the past because of uh, competition, right? Mm. Like Blackberry it, is one. No, I mean, like, like, take, like take for example, airplanes, uh, your cars, automobiles. These were uh, industries with huge technological advancements, right? but yet most of them die and it would be very painful for investors. So I want to get your thoughts on technological mm. advantage. Like why is that uh, it, in and of itself a competitive advantage? I, I, I think it is a relative technology advantage. Okay. So um, just like um, if you are the only one in the world that can produce EUV machines, uh, sure. extra, extreme ultraviolet machines uh, to be used in the photolithography process, uh, then there is an advantage. So if you are the only one in the world that can produce photoresist material mm. that is of that quality um, by a Japanese company, mm. so there is an advantage. Mm, so right. you is is a is an advantage. I but it's very difficult to achieve. Yeah. Mm. But once you are there, also not very easy for people to catch up yeah. for 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 a time yeah. a time period. Yes. Then you don't stand still. Uh, you continue to to enhance uh, to improve so and for company like this uh, for example TSMC mm-hmm. um okay they 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 are basically doing you can call them a uh, contract manufacturing yeah. yeah so but then but then why is a contract manufacturer can have uh, like 50% margins uh? yeah. So, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> very like ROE and all this right yeah um and it's not one two years uh, it has been quite a while many years uh. yeah um to to me, uh, I think it's that the they have 
te- technical technological know how sure. on the processes. You know the machines they they they, they, they have to buy. Yeah, yeah. they acquire yeah. from third yeah. parties. Yeah, but the I I'm not sure whether you can call this a uh, process know how and process technology as one of the technical advantage. But I I believe they have mm-hmm. it. Uh. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why you can see competitors drop out actually. Right. Mm-hmm. They, they just drop out because it's too tough already. So yeah. no the number of competitors keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Yes, not yes, only yes, yes. not only got two. Two right. So yep. Yeah. yeah. So the and then Intel used to be maybe one two generation ahead. Now it's one two generation behind. Yeah. Uh, and there is a technology could get. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very simple. One is ten, one is five yeah. nanometer, and then later one 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 maybe they'll go to seven, and another one will be three. Correct. So it takes it takes some time. So that that time gap is the technological advantage, which we then how 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 to know how to be sure that you yeah. continue you, it will be durable. If you look at branding, all this is a lot simpler, like Rolex brand. Yeah, 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 yeah of, of course, yeah. of course. But then for this one, is in the end, it's still go back to, to the jockey, mm. to the to the businessman, to the management. What are they doing on R and D? Yeah. So, so that's how I look at it. Yeah, I and and it, um, this is a point that is is spark, uh, because it's a lot of my interest about um, how TSMC is continuously being a better jockey. There's a lot of Chinese companies yes. that are pinching TSMC's engineer. I mean, just uh, two days ago, I read this article about SIMC's uh, co exec co CEO. He was awarded a flat. He was given more shares, and he's also trying to trying to bring more people from TSMC yeah. over to SIMC. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, will they be able to replicate um, TSMC success? As one, secondly, is Maurice Chung is you know the founder, and he was a guiding light in how TSMC does things. Do you see the second in command or the 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 new batches of TSMC leaders? Living up to what Maurice actually started off with. To your first question, I don't know. Okay, the SMIC one. Um, I don't know yet. We, will yeah. they be able to replicate? Yeah. What do you think? So I, I, I think. Yeah. Okay, but, but I, I, I believe in. But I, I'm a big fan of China. Okay, so mm-hmm. I believe in um, the their concert, concerted effort mm. in achieving the. Semiconductor independence. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe they will do it. Okay. But I understand it's very tough. So mm. it, it will it will take times. Mm. Um, whether it's SMIC or whether it's high silicon or mm. whether it's some someone else, uh, I really don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether this type SMIC will be successful, I, I do not yeah. know actually. Yeah. But, okay. but overall, I believe the country will be successful in in achieving in the right this. direction. Yeah. Okay. But you see, but you see my point, right? So like of all the. I think of all the points, right? I think this point probably is the most contentious one. Yeah, yeah about it is. Techno- technological advantage. Because, I, I mean, I've read Buffett quite a bit. Where he would come from, I think, like, okay, I'm not him, obviously, but where he would come from, having read his stuff, right? He would say that precisely because you need a jockey. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Right, because I think uh, Peter Lynch, right? He has a famous saying, right? You know, uh, yeah. you know, find a company with a good business uh, and that an idiot can run because eventually <laughs> one will, right? I, I'll add one to that. Yeah, yeah. Find a company... Even an idiot can run, but provided that the idiot has integrity. Yeah, ah. true, true, mm. true. Yeah, mm. you can give it a plus. I'm not saying I'm not saying plus. I'm just you can give it a highway. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then you can give it, no, no, no. I mean, no, the come, the come, the come. Just, plus just is alright. No, yeah. I'm saying that mm. you can give mm. it a highway and then a toll road. Yeah, yeah. It's fairly decent business, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But what if the money all go back to true. his own pocket? True. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to go to work, one, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's that. That's that's really great because uh, I think this is very good discussions on modes because technology is one that really confuses people. A yeah. Lot. But okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the second part he hasn't answered. Like Maurice. Oh with right, him, yes, if, yes. With him stepping down, I mean, not taking an active route. Right, right. Do right. you see that the management culture in TSMC? Um, still, because I'm I based on what you gave an example, I, I'm guessing you are invested, but don't need to disclose. What do you see? Signs of evidences that uh, that culture will continue to to flourish. Uh? What 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 do you look for actually to be able to say that oh, the jockey is still doing well. Um. So far, so good. The culture is strong mm. there. The way they, they think about things, the way they do things are still very consistent, mm. fairly strong. Usually, usually a culture will not 
dissipate so fast. Uh. Okay. So, um, but then we have to observe because when you when you invest in the company, usually it's not like one off. You buy, then you don't do anything after that. Yeah. So we have to observe um year after year, what do they do? Mm. Do they did they did they deviate, deviate cash out? Yeah. And all, and all this. So I think for a firm answer, I think that's yet to be seen. Okay. Um, we just started. Yeah. Uh, but when I look at the culture, the culture is very strong there. Okay. Still very strong there. The yeah. core people are there. Okay. Yeah. And they are there for many years. Many so. many years already. Because Intel ha- suffered from this in a way when when Intel was first founded, they were you know revolutionary and all that, and then they they changed CEO. Yeah. That's that's the that's the point I'm trying to say like. Yeah. yeah. But the CEO for our side. Uh. <laughs> yeah. The new one. The new one. No. The new one is from inside last. Time. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I, 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 we, we, we don't like we don't have share in Intel, but I, I, I think that the so far uh, the way I look at it is that the, the new CEO is very, very stream. Yeah, uh, very, very smart. Yeah, very yeah. Shrewd, yeah. I, I just mm-hmm. watch his keynote. I, I think he's really yeah. gonna change Intel. So, so it, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, but then we also understand it'll take years. Uh. Yeah, it's <laughs> not tomorrow in <it's> start. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it'll take years. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to interrupt this podcast. I know it's a little bit annoying, but I want to tell you something that I think can be really helpful to you. I can tell you're really interested in the stock market and want to learn more about it so that you actually know what you're doing, especially when today things are getting more complex and complicated. That's why we came up with the Stock Investing Blueprint or SIB. It's our signature e-learning program that teaches you how to pick the right stocks most of the time, buy and sell it at the best possible time and manage your stock portfolio systematically. It currently has more than 10 hours of content and it's growing. you also be part of a group of like-minded investors that can help speed up your learning process. To hop on the program, click on the link in the description or go to learn.viral.co slash courses slash SIB. So now that's more on the, the identifying modes, but let's go back even further, right? Because a lot of our listeners really want to know, and so do we. Uh, how do you actually start out generating some of these fresh ideas? Now, I'll just read a quote off your website, right? Which is that you guys have developed a time-tested quantitative, that's mm. the key word that mm. I'm interested in, quantitative process for idea generation. So you want to explain that a little bit? Yeah, but I think I also say that we we have done less and less of that. So we uh-huh. move more towards a qualitative based investment. <laughs> so qualitative we still do. Um you can in it's not something complex. You can go with factor investing. So um some it depends on what, what do you believe and what do you like and all mm. this. Uh. Mm-hmm. So to me is what makes sense. Uh. Mm. So so you can you can you can uh, there are a lot of factors that you can use. You can use RLC as a factor, you can use EV beta as a factor, mm. you can use a uh, you can use earnings growth as a factor and blah, 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 blah. blah. The financial that, ratios. That, are. Those, these are the quantitative met- methods. Uh. Ours is not like super complex, mm. but it gives ideas. Mm. Then you look at those ideas and see whether it makes sense or not mm. from, from there. Yeah. Um, I, I, I feel that in 2012, 13, I developed the thing and then uh, for a period of three years, it did just extremely well. But mm. then, I also sense that the competitions are coming, are closing in already because mm-hmm. this thing is not like Super difficult, so certainly people will catch up, yeah. Yeah. So after the I stopped doing that. So I, right. I sort of like um re- reduce that portion. Um, then we try to buy good business run mm. by good people and mm. hold it. Mm. Yeah. Right. Like, no, the the last point of the investment philosophy is uh, the price mm. uh, that that we pay for business. Um, for a great business, uh, we are certainly willing to pay fair price. But at fair price, we probably buy a decent position, mm. but it won't be a huge position. So, but if it's very overvalued, we, I cannot pull myself to buy it. Sure. So that's 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 tough. Then, um, so when it, when it, when you become undervalued, we will buy a huge a huge chunk of it. Yeah? Mm. So that that's how we do. So the valuations uh comes into play after the first four criteria. Yeah. Mm. All right. So what is too much for you? Like what is overvalued in your view? You see, uh, in the in the end, we look at um the cash flow that it can generate, uh. uh some some people use PE and all this. 
But then the cash flow that you can generate also consists of the growth mm. in the future. So they, they need to have certain view on on this, uh, how, how the company is going to, to turn out to be like in roughly 10 years time, 15 years times. Um, then based on that cash flow, compared to current valuation, then do you think it's worth it? Lah? Do you mm. think it makes sense or not? Yeah. Mm. So I told you I avoided certain industry, for example, uh, like this uh, construction mm. uh, because I, I don't know how to see the cash flow down, down the road. <laughs> sure. so, so I just don't know. So um, if you want to go for a trade, maybe you don't have to think that long, that much. Yeah. Mm. Then you see the cycle turn, you chime in, maybe you will make money there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I don't do that. Yeah. Mm. So am I hearing for, for this? For that sector, yeah. Am I hearing this right that you do an NPV analysis essentially for stock? Um, that is a uh, as a backup check, right. yes, but it's not the it's not the um most important things, uh. right? Mm. Yeah. So, and and then I I believe in market dynamics. Uh, different market behave slightly differently. Mm. Okay. So, uh, you can that's why you can see Malaysian market are always very expensive. Mm. Uh, a lot of stocks. Uh. Mm. and then um, you you can that's why you see some. Uh, single market are uh, usually mm. quite low, quite low, and also um, not much volume, mm. not much activities, and all this. Uh. Mm. So, so the, the the market dynamic itself, uh, uh, to be we we try to be pragmatic and try to be practical. So, so the same company that lives in Singapore, and if it lives in Malaysia, if it lives in Malaysia, there's a company in Singapore called Franken. If it lives in Malaysia, probably yep. three times the price now. Yeah. So, uh, it is just the way it is. So, so to a certain extent, um, we got to respect that also. Mm. Um, so it, it comes into play when, when, when I think about the valuation potential. Mm. Mm. I see. Yeah. Okay, so when you say backup, uh, what, what do you mean? Because I ideally, right, whether you use PE, R, P, PE or PB versus ROE and PE plus growth or PEG, all these uh, valuation met, met, method to think about a company and also you, and also DCF. In the end, uh, to, to me, la, what makes sense is that they all have to sort of like come to a convergence. Com- yeah, converge to a middle ground that is not too far off. Mm. So it, it's unlikely to be like you use one method, then it works 10 times more than <laughs> you use another method. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I say it's a it's a it's, it's a bit like a backup check. Mm. Uh, yeah. mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. So one other thing I, I mentioned uh, you mentioned in your in your website as well is this I'm gonna read it again, right? So very often there is no easily identifiable catalyst in the near term and we will wait patiently for it to come. Now, here's my interesting question. This word catalyst is being used a lot in the industry, right? What is a catalyst to you? What is a catalyst to uh Oakland Spa? Um catalyst uh, can come in the form of the uh, sales earnings growth. Mm. So itself is a good catalyst. <laughs> okay. Catalyst can come in the form of corporations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Catalyst can come in the form of um, um information dissemination. So mm. there is a information discrepancy sometimes mm. uh, in certain sectors or certain stocks. Yeah. So so this can be a catalyst also. Mm. So sometimes you have a gem, but uh, not enough people looking at it or yeah. not enough people understanding it. So then um, if you can shed some light on the gems, then probably more people will come to realize that actually it's quite good. Yeah. Mm, mm. So that you, then you can see it is an information dissemination process or the discrepancy in the information that uh, create this type of uh, valuation gap. Mm. And probably the business and the management are quite good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How often do you see that uh, dissemination gap in, in some way? Lesser and lesser. Okay. Uh, in the past a lot. Mm. Um, I think as the market go up and more people jumping into some market, more stocks guru on Facebook, uh, all as up. Uh, it, of course, it shrinks the uh, this kind of opportunity. Mm. Yeah, all right. yeah. But there are still some. Yeah, but lesser. So, would you say that these kind of like catalyst-driven trades are less? Uh, I mean, they they make money obviously, but they are not the long-term compounders or not? Certainly no. Yeah. Right. So there's certainly no long-term compounders. But then um. It can be huge also mm. in terms of the percentage gain over say a year or two yeah, period. Because yeah. one more catalyst, when I say earnings growth, actually industry cycle turn around is also will create earnings mm. growth as well, yes, right? Yes. So so if you understand certain industry very well, so that's why I in my when my friend asked me about 
what should they invest in? I just tell them you invest in the industry that you work in. Uh, mm. You you understand. Uh. Mm. So because um, if even if you're in cyclical industry, if you pay attention to it, uh, if you understand it, then you can track the very long term kind of uh, supply and demand. Correct. Yeah, it's applicable to many many types of industry. Like, mm. like if you're in a crude oil industry, I mean a crude oil related industries, or if you are in say a uh, shipping industry. Mm. So, well, I think we just put um, okay. Sorry, we we will put our articles on come shipping industry on our website soon. Mm. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. So nice. Yeah. So the cycle is the cycle supply yeah. demand cycle over a twenty year period. Mm. How it evolve and then why why is it that the yeah. Uh, it seems to be bottom out. Mm, mm. Yeah. So, so now the that net demand is outpacing uh, net supply into the next two years. That's what we can see. So, should be better than the last ten years in terms of the overall earnings. So, mm. earnings growth is coming. Um. This is a catalyst. I so see. the the turning around of a cyclical industry is catalyst. But this is a tough thing because uh, you need to follow it closely. You need to, you need to understand many industry because. You need to have a wide, wide understanding of multiple industries so that your portfolio can fill up with different yeah, stocks at yeah. different times. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so we 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 do that because um, we have been doing it for twelve years. So certainly there are some industries that we understand better than yeah. the others industry. So uh, the knowledge base also for the pipeline of the idea is there. I so see. waiting for it to happen one by one, one by one, one by one. Yeah. Yeah. Based on the point, and, and, and I think uh, you, we mentioned Bloomberg somewhere along earlier, right? The kind of uh, information or the data set that you're getting, right? Um, for you to run a fund, do you think something like Bloomberg is indispensable? No. Okay. So, I mean, to many people, may, maybe the answer is yes. Uh, mm. Many funds. Uh, uh, um, well, I only use it for some data, uh, which... Uh, if I don't use Grimper, I probably can use Raiders, Thomson okay. Raiders. Refinitiv. Refinitiv uh, uh, or Morning Stars. Uh, mm. uh, they, I think there are quite a number of uh, providers out there. Mm, mm. But then I think human got this uh, this uh, inertia to change. Uh. Mm, so mm. Uh, you're used to this. You just carry on. Uh. Yeah. Mm. So And then second is um, this... Uh, we a lot of funds that I know, so including ourselves, we, we do execute trades via Bloomberg. Mm. So that one, that one actually is a network effect there eh? mm. because all, all the brokers are <laughs> all the no brokers choice are uh. there. Then uh, all the funds are there. Yeah. So um so within the Bloomberg business, other than ecosystem, there's a network effect there. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's it's very powerful. Eh? Understand? No, because uh, it was leading on to this next question about shipping and. Um, people from outside the industry like things like the change of marine gas oil. And it's not very apparent to people outside the industry and that kind of data set, right? Is it only available in blue? Obviously, there's a lot of news articles that cover it now, but when mm. IMO first introduced that, mm. where will be the initiating data source that you get from? Will it be Bloomberg news. or News? La? It's really news. So, news uh, so, so you can read, um, of course, you can read Bloomberg News, you can read Financial Times, uh, mm, mm. Um, and you, you can read uh, even The Edge. Um, mm. So because sometimes they pull article from yeah, yeah, yeah. From from them, yeah. Yeah. So um you can read you can actually you just read news. You if you read like three, four newspaper a day, uh-huh. uh chances are you the kind of news will pop up one. And yeah. I see. You know, so it's, it's it's not a small thing, it's a it's a big thing. It's yeah. a big thing. And actually uh, the first time I read about it, it was like three years ago. Yeah, it's yeah, about three years I, ago. I am old zero point five percent sulfur content kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so now they all rush go and buy a low sulfur fuel oil. Yeah. 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 Now the, the the reason why I asked that question yeah. was more to distinct to say that regardless of whether you have a Bloomberg, if you yeah. choose the right sources, you can still also get this kind of information news flow. Yeah. No issue. No, no issue. issue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. News flow, just read news actually. Okay. Yeah. Excellent, excellent point. Yeah. So now let's talk about something a little bit different, which is investing locally and by local mm. in Malaysia versus global. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on what are some of the key differences having, I assume, invested in both markets? Um, the differences uh, in that in general, Malaysia markets are more expensive. Mm. Uh, that's the key difference. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, the market behave differently, actually. Mm. So, is um, to me, personally, 
I feel that it's slightly more predictable. Yeah. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how about everyone else, but and then um in terms of the market action in the short term, it's slightly more predictable. Um for but then because we hold the company usually sometimes you hold three, four, five years. Uh, so mm. I don't really worry yeah, that much also. Course. Yeah. So and the uh, key difference, I'm not sure whether this answers your question, but for example, I, I look at the semi coin industry in Malaysia. Um, people are buying at 60, 70, 80 times P. Yeah. Very normal. Uh, then, then actually I do not understand. <laughs> why 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 don't they buy Facebook? <laughs> so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it is at say twenty five times, twenty six times P. And then the company is also growing at 30 thirty percent, what? Yeah, <laughs> got, uh, to me at least you get a very strong mode and all this. So, so why don't you buy something way cheaper, uh, with faster growth potential? There, are, there are a lot of very good companies in Malaysia. Uh, they're trading at very very extreme valuations now, mm. and the growth is only like five percent, mm. eight percent a year. Uh, they can trade at sixty times or even seventy, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, fifty times. I never understood that. So. So these are the key differences. The right. Malaysian market tends to be higher price for few good companies because there's a scarcity of good companies and there is a lookout funds. The EPF, yeah. PMB, PMB, they have a they have a dedicated portions that invested locally and there's a lot of money every month, every year they comes in. Mm. So they do the buy they need to deploy it. So there's a strong support there. Mm. Singapore market doesn't have it. Yeah. And I so uh, oh, I know JIC cannot invest in Singapore stock. Oh, I could be wrong on this, but you know this this information a couple of years ago. Maybe okay. they have changed their policy change and all this. Yeah, but you can see a few hundred billion funds uh, don't invest here versus a few hundred billion funds like EPF, maybe a trillion funds. Yeah, can invest here. Yeah, so the it create different amount of demand for the, the securities. Yeah. yeah, so the price level become different. Yeah, yeah. Right. Actually, that was the point that I brought up in the. I think when we met Si Cheng. Um, okay. Vitrox being sold at seventy PE, but TSMC being sold at thirty PE, and you know, in yep. terms of sales, uh, So you, you can call it different. That's why I, I feel mark, different market got different dynamics. Yeah. So we can all expect TMC, TSMC go to seventy times PE also. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just different market dynamics. Uh. And sort of go to respect it. Yeah. Because if, if I think, oh, it's too crazy, then we go and short beat drops. <laughs> you, you may just lose your pants on that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, so for, for Oakland, right, what is the thought when it comes to geographical allocation? What is it currently and where do you all want it to be? Currently, you have slightly more US. Um, <clears throat> slightly more US, um, followed by Malaysia. Philippines and uh, China, Hong Kong. Mm, mm. If you ask me, I the number one country that I want to go and to invest for the next thirty years of my life uh, will be China. Mm. Uh, I see a lot of a lot of uh, great entrepreneurs there, mm. great businesses mm. keep moving ahead. The China nowadays are fast, vastly different from last time. The, yeah. They spend a lot on R and D, so mm. a lot of business that I look at spend R and D. The the only thing that the, the portion that we invest in China is not big, although we have learned a lot about the companies and industry simply because uh, too expensive mm. <laughs> don't, mm. at this moment. Oh. Valuation. Don't, 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 yeah, it's always the valuation matters. Uh, so, but then I, I, it's okay. It, there will be opportunity one. Sure. So, um, yeah. So, the, if you ask me, um, I hope that over the years, uh, it will become the largest market uh, right. portfolio, in, in, our portfolio. In, 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 in our portfolio. Right. But then we are very primitive investor. So what we want, okay, despite all these things that I've shared, uh, basically in my mind, it's still when I contract portfolio, it is that which is the best idea based on the number one probability of happening. Mm. How do I see it mm. happened. So if mm. I think that it has 99% chance or 95% chance of happening, mm. then number two, it's the potential gain <laughs> or loss. So so if you have a high, very high probability of being right, and then a very high potential gain, and you're very confident about it, mm. then I'll go for it. Mm. So that, that's how I structure the portfolio. So the the most, this kind of, the number one idea always get a very big allocation. Large allocation. So then it follows since from there. Yeah. Mm. 
Um, so we run concern, more concentrated than most other people. Um, but to me, it's a rational thing to do. Then, yeah. uh, then, so maybe hopefully we can find something that gives us that kind of uh, confidence in both businesses, industry, management, and valuation mm. mm, in right. China. In China, then mm. then it will become a again, very very large position for us. Also, understand. It is not that difficult to identify a uh, great businesses. Mm. Uh, you look at look at them, look at them around using ROC or look at the business model and all this. It, it may not be too difficult, but then it is difficult to find one at the price that yeah you're gonna <laughs> buy that yeah. yeah 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 because we are just normal people. Whatever we come to realize, one thousand people already realized. So they're <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so they already bought, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we go deeper into, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, with regards to China, because there's this perception yeah, that, that's right, yeah. yeah, a lot of scam companies and yeah. you know, it doesn't help that, you know, uh, people like uh, uh, Muddy Waters yeah, you know, and then Luckin Coffee and all that. China Hustle. China Hustle, yeah. yeah. How, so, do you, how hmm. do you vet in a way, right? Do you mandate that you must do on the ground research or do you think that just pure online research reports or you must meet management before you decide to put in a position? Do you have that kind of rule or it doesn't exist? No, I don't have that kind of rule. Okay. So um, quantitatively for, for companies that I do not know yet, mm -hmm. um, then uh, I will just look at their cash flow statement for the last 10, 20 years. <laughs> then you, you see, number one, do they pay tax? A lot of this scam they don't pay tax one. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. I mean, you scam it, it's difficult to pay tax huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the scam itself. So, yeah. so the tax rate will be very low on non-existent. Yeah, there are too many of them. Like Sandal Forest, Chowder Modern. You go and take a look in the past ten years, they don't pay tax one. Ah. So, uh, okay. Then uh, number two, they, they say they make a lot of money, a lot of cash. Do they pay dividend consistently? Mm. Mm, and mm. Do, number three, do they raise new equity financing or debt? Yeah. Mm. I mean, you have so much cash, but how do you need more, yeah. <laughs> more cash and more or more debt and all this? Right, so, right. so it's just something very simple. Does is it um, does it make common sense? Uh? Mm, so mm, mm. when you see something doesn't make common sense, you just totally avoid it. Uh? So mm. you, you, because there's so many things to look at, mm. so you just forget about that particular company, then you move on. So at least I use the exclusion method here to exclude what I don't want mm. to see or what I don't want to have. Then um. Then the best, the rest will be slightly better. Yeah. And then, um, okay, from there, then look at, then, 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 okay, after that, then it is look at the company and then look at its competitor. Mm. You compare them. Then um, if you are, have sufficient confidence, then we will start, we will start purchase already. Okay. It's usually a small position. Usually, usually we, we, we may start purchase before we meet them. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's not a compulsory thing. Mm. If, it depends on your level of confidence. So so if you usually but, but after I'm I purchase and definitely I would I want to meet them. So, yeah. <laughs> so sorry. then uh it, after that um it may be a confirmation of a thesis or it may be a uh like the opposite. So mm. so then from, from there we decide further. La. I see. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. okay. Any more questions? No. No. Okay, so I I want to get your thoughts also on Philippines. I think I yeah. have one very interesting thing. So I think a lot of our listeners are Malaysian, some overseas, and Philippines is not even something they think about. Yeah, <laughs> on the, not even on the radar. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine actually. Yeah. So we 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 only have to do what we know mm -hmm. uh, within our circle of competence, within our strength. So so if you. It's our way then our way and doesn't matter one. So, so what what do you yeah. find interesting about Philippines? Uh, uh, generally, I find that the market is cheaper now. Um, the COVID is less well managed. Uh, unfortunately, mm. well, I, I hope that they can get improved Improve. sooner. So um, then they are good businesses, mm. good entrepreneur that we come across. Uh, very creative. Um, very hungry mm. and has a very good corporate governance. So they are, really? they are okay. yeah, so they certainly, yeah. So just like you asked about China, actually I found, I hold the opposite view. Actually, I, I found many Chinese company, Asia one, mm. have very good corporate, corporate, corporate governance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so it, maybe they're also a large portion are shit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> this, this one, yeah. So, yeah. well, you have to pick the apple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Uh, Philippines is the same thing, but in general, is that um the market is uh, a lot cheaper than uh, the, I think the Huaxian. Mm. So, um, so we also it's also in the end uh, it's also based on the so called probability confidence level or probability of the thing happenings mm. and uh, how much we think if if the the company is worth versus mm. current price. So that is expected value. Uh. That that one led led me to Philippines, yeah. Right. Because I, I find something that I found something that say I have ninety nine percent confidence of being right, and that is a three hundred percent return mm-hmm. over a period of five years. And I'm being very conservative already. Mm-hmm. So, so when you when you see such thing, um, it doesn't make sense not to act on it. Yeah? So understand, yeah, understand. Right. How how. Can you give us an example of what led you to the Philippines? You know, was it a trigger from a news? Or was it a trigger from a screen friend. or a friend? Oh, it's my mentor, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so the two of them, uh, they, they, they they cover ASEAN market. Uh, okay. well, then, uh, then I uh, once in a while I follow them to to Philippines to 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 do some road trip and see companies and all this. Ah. Uh, then, uh, yeah, so. So then, uh, this 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 company is one that I met in twenty seventeen or sixteen. I can't even remember, but but since then I I follow it like it is a very powerful business model. Okay, very, very good franchise, strength very high OE and all this. But then, but then uh, it was very expensive back then. Uh. So I see. So now thing changed. Oh, um, yeah. So it is um because of. My friends, oh yeah, thanks to them, my my mentor. Yeah. I so, see. So for because. Like for yeah, me. I I do, I do not actively go and like search company in sure, Philippines. Sure. I do not. <laughs> so, um, I actively search me search company in China. Uh, uh, but then somehow it become a smaller portion of the population <laughs> at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, valuation yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so then at least I I I think I do investing for the sake of uh, learning, growing my knowledge, mm. uh, improving myself to become better investor. Mm. So know yeah. more and more things. So seeking worldly wisdom. So that so that hopefully one day I have the wisdom to see things that most people cannot see. Mm. Yeah. So this is the direction. So so when I learn about all these Chinese companies which I cannot invest in because of the price and all this, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So yeah. So so long as our portfolio has a good has a very good construction of a um stock that we are extremely confident that it will do very well. Mm. So that so that so I, I I just told my investor I, I think most likely we will outperform over long term by a big margin. So, mm, mm. um, so 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 then the portfolio I believe we should do okay. Then uh, then I continue to spend time on China. So mm, try, right, try to right. try to learn as much as I can. Actually, if not due to COVID, I will be living in China for about two three months a year. That's my original plan. But then now COVID, yeah. So just to get a pulse of the market, right? Because you're there, they're in, they're out, and just to understand businesses better, I guess. And to build network also. So, mm. to for example, um. It's probably, I it probably a full time investor or so called fund manager kind of a, a privilege. Which, okay, I do not think it is fair. But then, for example, in, in Malaysia, is that if I want to engage with certain companies and want to talk to them, uh, I can do it mm. almost uh, instantly uh, mm-hmm. or like one two days time three days. No, okay, often not 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 everyone will will be want to see me, yeah, willing to see me. But but then uh, but then in China I can't do it yet. So mm. there's a purpose of going there. Yeah. So to to build a, a sufficiently strong network, uh, which I can use for the next thirty years. Yeah. Mm. Right. So now let's before we talk about performance and and all that, uh, I want to get your thoughts on diversification. What mm. is the strategy for portfolio o- strategy o- for Oakland? Uh, cur- currently we have we have about twenty percent. Uh, is still for. More trading oriented kind of things. Uh, okay. So, um, these are typically smaller kind of size uh, positions. When things pop up, then uh, we do. Then we have a. Uh, at this moment, we also have roughly about twenty percent in tech stock. So mm. in uh, mainly China and US uh, based okay. tech stock um, mostly. So, uh, these are quite rather well, well diversified within that portion also. Okay. Mm. Um. Then the rest is a. Uh, is a uh, try to seek for compounder a long term um kind of a uh, high highly certain kind of return companies, uh, so so this portion is uh usually don't don't move much and then um and also this portion is uh, highly concentrated mm. right so it depends uh so sometimes uh, the f- 
top five position is more fifty percent, sixty percent. Yeah, so it, it depends from time to time. Depends on idea mm. uh, and all these. Uh. Mm. So okay. I actually, I, I feel slightly different is that the more concentrated it is, uh, I feel the more comfortable. Ah, mm. <laughs> huh, interesting. So, yeah, well, most people will, will be will be the reversed. opposite. Yeah. Because but to me is that if you know inside out about this company, all the possibility and and risk and everything, and and the management, the culture, the people, the way they do things, and blah 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 blah, I think you know you buy at this price. So, so isn't it that the more considered, the more comfortable it is? Yeah. yeah. So that, that's how I I, I think uh. Yeah. Because the margin of when you're bought, like what you said, you're quite allergic to high valuations, and you wouldn't buy. That means when you are buying after understanding your margin of safety is so high, uh, that's that's why you. In other words, yes, uh, margin yeah. of safety. Uh. Yeah. So margin of safety reverse is your potential again. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So you say that the top five will be about half the portfolio, right? At this moment, yes. So wow. you we be fair to say ten percent would be what you would consider concentrated in a single position. Uh yeah 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 yes but then uh some are sort of higher than that yeah right? of course yeah. Of course. Has, has it hit? Well, we have a limit of twenty percent. Ah, okay. That's okay. the question I was on. Okay, twenty okay. percent. Okay. Yeah. So, the there's a there's a rule for the problem. so based on the cost that we we invest in, it, it cannot be more than twenty. Um, what what happens if but the, I, if yeah. it like runs? Huh? That you bought you bought it. Cheap okay. The the rule that we set as we start the fund is um. If it's it's market driven, uh-huh. then then it, it it's okay. So you just let it run lah. Exactly. It's just let it run because. Yeah. It doesn't make sense just to, for the sake of uh, maintaining the twenty percent, then you keep selling a company that <laughs> can go out five times. You sell it yeah after la, more than twenty percent. Every day you sell, <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do that. Yeah. yeah, of course. Okay, so now, uh, you mentioned a word just now that I find interesting, which is outperformance. That you say that quite comfortably you outperform the market. Now you've been managing fund for about six years now, almost. Mm. So one, what has that? Outperformance look like and going forward in today's market, right? Do you think it's replicable? Do you think that you can do it better? Um, so far it's about ten percentage point, mm. uh, eleven percentage point a year on average. Mm. Um, Outperformance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, after fees. Yeah. Mm. So um, what's okay. the benchmark? Sorry. Uh, we we use the okay because predominantly we invest in uh, when we started. So in in, in four countries. Uh, mm. Uh, US, um, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. Okay, so, um, uh, these are these are the metrics. Yeah. So you use an aggregate of aggregate the, yes uh, of these four these four the, the four indexes yeah. lah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the this is the benchmark. Yeah. So the benchmark will have grown by my estimation anywhere between five to eight percent somewhere there. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so the, the basically what we think is that um over very long term, for country like China or US right. Um, the GDP growth and also because of inflation and everything, so the companies there, the top five hundred companies or CSI three hundred top three hundred companies there, typically over the last one hundred years for the U in the case of US is that for the last one hundred years the compounded return is say eight nine percent. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. So um. So to top it, that's that's our target. Yeah. So mm. um. And. So it have yeah. So we somehow somewhat managed to do it. Uh, in the last five years, so six years in in the next coming four five years. Actually, at this point in time, I feel I seriously may feel more confident that it will be better. Mm. Uh, mainly because of the portfolio construction that mm. both the stock. Well, in investment, to me, I feel that investment is something that it should be something that when you buy. Then you really know you make the money. Mm. Uh, then you you, you then make your you money just, when you purchase. Uh, uh. Yeah, you make the money when you purchase. Actually, mm. so you sort of like know how much this thing is uh, ultimately worth, and then um, you already you you sort of like imagine that you already make the money. Mm. Yeah. So then then you you wait lah. Yeah. So um, based on that, that's why I think probably will do better. Yeah. Understand. Nice. So if so. I'm just doing some math. So if let's say it's eight percent a year, you want to hit at least eighteen lah. If it's okay, the, in in the annual letter that I send to investor, we actually put down uh the target is a uh, our performance of seven between seven to ten percent per annum over five year period. Yeah, so that's a range. Yeah. Okay, mm. nice, nice. It's tough. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But maybe that 
make it challenging. And sure. then also, um, if that's not if if this not the case, uh, why don't you just buy index fund? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Why yeah. why why the need yeah. for active management actually? Yeah, and then why why do I want to do investment? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just curious, right? Uh, what has been your best and worst investment so yeah. far in your I think almost 15 years of investing? Um, the worst one happened in the earlier years. Uh, in the 2009. Um. Okay. On oh nine oh nine, I made some extremely good bet because the market was so low. Mm. So some of them triple in half a year and all this. But then, but then the worst one also happened that year after that I made those money. Mm. So I made no much those money in oh nine, and then uh, I went on to buy a com. Can it's it's not really a company an ETF called United State Natural Gas. Oh, so ooh. okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, very soon lose half in in that yeah, maybe not not even six months. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I realized I was wrong, so I sold it off. Yeah. I so, uh, but at that point of time, I was only running playing with my own little pot of money. So yeah, yeah, it's hurt, but then it's still okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, be, but then thanks to that, I learned about natural gas. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, I learned about shale gas back in oh nine. Uh, so slightly early then other people, I guess. So uh that's why in one four, one four it helped it helped me to avoid the and the time I was in, I was managing fund for Etic Club. Mm. Because of these uh, understandings, um it helped me to avoid the oil price cash. Mm. So because because of show oil show gas, then yeah. I learned about show oil. Yeah. Then uh then I actually wrote an article about show gas and coal and power plant on the edge. In 2012. Okay. So I explained how it works. Then um so because of that kind of uh, history, then I understand the show show oil. So I I, I see I, I sort of like see that the oil price is will be have some problem. <laughs> so <laughs> so 2014, uh, when the crash comes, we, we don't have any oil in gas store. Uh, so, mm. so so at least we didn't get hurt. Uh, so uh then um best uh, um uh, quite quite a few investments are comparable in a mm. sense. Uh but one of it we are still holding now um and so far it's quite good. Uh is a, a company called Mega First Corporation mm. it's, a, ah. it's a Malaysian company. Uh it probably is not the highest return ever in, in our portfolio, but then uh, um I consider it among the, the best. Uh, mm -hmm. because um when 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 we look at it that time, it was uh, twenty fifteen. I went to Laos. Uh, mm -hmm. That time they haven't even started the, the construction. Yeah, mm. so I went to Laos and then and then I stick three days all night. I stick with the engineer. Mm. The boss, the boss is very nice, very sweet guy. But mm. I don't stick with him, so mm. I stick with the engineer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so I drink with the engineer. So I just uh, ask them. I mean, this project. Mm. Uh, how, how is it? Mm. Then the, the engineer. Uh, I like engineer. They are very pragmatic, very uh, down to earth, yeah. very fair people mm. so that's meant to me yeah so i, I learned about the dynam the, the whole things and then i went back then in google then you can find tons of tons of documents about yeah. that thing so it's more well, i think they really hit the <laughs> hit the gold mine there yeah. so so then 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 i came back and continue to learn and think about it uh then we, we invest uh. mm. so I can't remember exactly which year I went, but then, but then when I pop when I started the fund in August twenty fifteen, we we started buying. Mm. Uh, then uh, we hold until today. Mm. So, then I think it's a three, they is a three three x hundred. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a three yeah, x uh, about that three uh, plus three hundred fifty yeah. plus. Okay, we, we if I remember correctly, we 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 half our position last time was a warrant. So mm, okay. uh, oh, the warrants are uh, uh, it, it had a warrant which uh, we converted already. So. Mm. For oh, the warrant is nine x. Wow. <laughs> so um, mother share we will also have um is a uh, average cost for one eighty something. Then mm. so that is three x plus. Uh. Mm. So average maybe I don't know six x or something. Mm. So, yeah. But the more importantly is that it, it's still a sizable portion in the portfolio. We and I think some they will do very well. Mm. Uh, continuously. Mm. Um, the management is among the best I ever. I've ever met. Mm. I, I, I'm I'm still young, so probably I can't say some older farm agent maybe they met way way more way more people mm. than me. Mm. Um, but every year I meet say one fifty to two hundred. So this uh, say one fifty management. Mm. I, I rank them among the top already. So mm. Mm. so they are. 
that's quite a sizable sampling already actually you know yeah yeah and yeah. I've been working for twelve years so yeah so I think one should be <laughs> one say one fifty per year so twelve years you're talking about more than a thousand five already actually some of them repeat la. yeah <laughs> so, oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah so um in 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 totality is that um they they will continue to grow um if you go to AGM I go to, I went to the AGM five times six times then mm. then the the CEO will tell you okay um when when we make the income the the profit um we will raise the dividends uh, then he'll say something like anyway it's it's not my money it's everyone money oh mm-hmm. then you look at the exec- executive compensation <laughs> they have the lowest in Malaysia <laughs> for for their size <laughs> because if I'm not wrong the CEO pay is zero wow <laughs> so <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, it speak a lot of things about how how they think about the company, the mm. how they treat shareholders. And then he is, uh, because eventually we bet on people. So yeah. integrity is one big part. Yeah. But then capability, I, I think they are, he's among the best businessmen. Yeah. So of course there are also, there are probably there are many other very good businessmen like um, we can have Hata Lega. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kwan. Uh, Mr. Kwan, yeah. You can have uh, uh, this uh, Mr. Cha Cha Song Kun. Oh, Cha Song Kun. Yeah. So, QL, so yeah. the, the, all, all these are great. So I just think that he's also among the kind of league. But he's very under uh, undercover, uh, not not very low profile uh, comparatively to Mr. Yeah. Kwan and Dr. True, Cha. True. Yeah. yeah. So, so he also owns another company called D&O. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, businessman. I. I, I'm I'm going to write something about businessman categorization. <laughs> so mm, that would be interesting. I'm but then forward, it, it will be maybe unfair to. But then I, I will not name any name. So <laughs> so it's just that they are they are, they are I think they are great businessmen in the world. Mm. So great businessmen are people that can do business well themselves. They can hire people. They know how to hire businessmen. Mm. So in Robert Cook's book, he actually said one thing, one sentence: the most important thing is your businessman. So when I read that sentence, I was thinking, eh, isn't you the businessman? Yeah. <laughs> so so actually, yeah. People in in order to run multiple industry, multiple business line, you need the ability to attract and retain that kind of businessman to work for you. So, mm. And the third is uh they need to have the third criteria. There has to be a deal maker as well. Mm. At the same time. So we have all three. This at least this is my understanding. If we have all three together, then only few people in this world has it. So mm. that's why we don't have that many Robocook around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Andrew Cushing and all these people. Yeah. Um, so most businessmen are good businessmen. They can run one business. Mm. If you do too many things, they'll have some problem. <laughs> and then uh, usually they are not really able to hire extremely top businessmen to work for them. Mm. Uh, because usually in the end, it's a bit like family kind of business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, the the whole culture settings, uh, men- mentality, uh, everything is uh, different already. So, but they can run one business extremely extremely well. Also, mm, so mm. yeah. And then there's you can also you can also categorize normal businessmen and then the uh, deal makers, business uh, businessmen and lousy businessmen. Yeah? Mm, <laughs> so, mm. yeah, so yeah, this this how I how how I look at them. Then back to this um, uh, maker first. Uh, I I could be wrong on this and can be very wrong on this, but so far. Based on his track record and all these, I feel that um, I put him um, among the first category. Mm. Maybe not not really in there yet, but it's close. It's, it's close to there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so when you find such a company, uh, such a management, um, with such a good project, <laughs> and then and then uh, and you continue to grow. So the only thing is that um, I don't want to interrupt the compounding uh, unnecessary mm. or too early. Mm. So let them do. Uh, uh, and then compound and mm. then um hopefully then when do we sell is hopefully the market come to realize uh, the the value it then become fully value or sometimes become slightly overvalued mm. it may have i don't it may happen in malaysia i don't know mm. so then then we may we may reduce that uh, so so not now la. Mm. so i mean i have two questions yeah. leading up right so because we 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 know of the stock but we actually not uh looked at it uh, personally so what do you how will you describe the business? And number two, you use the word uh, the market that is not aware. It's really a three billion ringgit uh, market cap market cap company. But and and you will still say that it is not well covered or a bit undervalued. Uh, yeah, I, I I actually think it's a bit undervalued. Uh, market is aware, but uh, but it doesn't seem to be well covered. Mm-hmm. Um, then um, 
Mm, I okay. For example, I'm not sure whether people oh. knows that uh, you can actually track this. Uh, okay, for for one, they have already done, already executed, already already built. You look at the track record. Is that um, the project was announced like 450 million or something US dollar in the end they when they completed the project is only spent 360 million so they saved wow. 30 million they, they revised the cost down twice two times <laughs> they made announcement <laughs> <laughs> we managed somehow to somehow we managed to find this we find this saving somehow we managed to find another saving so, so it, it is a and then and then the project is way ahead of you so also so it is rare in the sense that yeah, I, I I just wanted to add, I, I I don't know whether you saw my jaw just drop because I I worked for Shell for ten years. We've never revised the project cost downwards. Uh. Yeah, they revised <laughs> twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> just to give you some context. <laughs> so so initially maybe you expect a pay so called payback period of a three and a half year. Yeah. Or four years. It's already very good, but yeah. now it'll drop to three years. Uh. <laughs> wow. so, so the then uh that, that's one thing. So the execution, all this uh, no no issue at all. Uh. Then um it, it is cash flow. Um, okay, from what you can see, last year they probably made 320 million uh, BAT, uh, 60 million is amortization of intangible asset you can add it back. Mm. So about four, 380 million kind of uh, uh, cash flow. Mm. So the cash flow, now they are adding a fifth buying, uh, which, and then also they have a packaging business is mm. uh, doubling actually, close mm. to doubling year on year, mm. Mm. Or, or at least it may double then uh, so then uh, the resources business are improving uh, this year so so you, you add up, i mean they have some uh solar installation as well they, mm. so they are, they are renewable actually they are renewable energy company mm. so why hydro is renewable then um yeah also that's that's what i think market don't really think 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 like that but actually 99 90 percent i would say of their income are renewable related mm. yeah. so it is a renewable energy company um then they some some solar contribution was started mm. uh, already started one a little bit but i think second day so for the maybe second la. third quarter uh, you grow you grow a lot yeah mm. so then um so in in totality is probably with the fifth bank coming in if you do your own calculations mm. you, you will see that the earnings growth will be there mm. so this last year last year laos has a extreme drought mm. uh, one of the worst in more than 30 years. Huh? Okay. So even then, first quarter last year, they got hit by the drought. Yeah. The utilization was 69-70%. Wow. The, for the hydro. Mm. If I, if you understand hydro plant, throughout the whole world, um, we, we invested in hydro plant in China, Hong Kong, and some other countries before the company. So I never seen something like this. Huh? So this this year, there's no drought. Yeah, just back to normal. So first quarter this year, it, will be a little better. Mm. Then uh, full year, full year, yeah, I think full year when I learned about it at the time, the expectation is uh, full year, the ut- utilization will be about 90% wow. for the hydro plant. Mm. Uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, the the CEO of Bakun Dam, uh, Sir Yong, probably now is working for them. Mm. If I still remember correctly, he told me something like, this is the best ever plant he will ever build in his life. Wow. <laughs> As an engineer. Yeah, okay. So, we have Bakun Dam only run by 40%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not so, that efficient. Yeah. But it's, it's normal because yeah. usually hydro is um, one year you have water, one year. Correct. Uh, yeah. Not Correct. one year, like you have season. Uh, yes, so, yes, yes. Yeah, so you cannot expect to to run like that. But this this project is different. Yeah. So, of course, this project is done. But then they have, they have, they have the other two divisions which I mentioned so is a... Uh, coming up and also they ha- they also have a pro- coconut plantations uh, they are coming up um, it will take years but then in the briefing the mention actually says something like um, our goal is to grow earning power mm. yeah. so they don't grow uh. mm. so then uh, if you do a DCF evaluation based on the cash flow if you whether you do DCF or whether you use um, PE or some people like PBROE whatever methods yeah I, I, I sense that it's really undervalued. Yeah. So mm. the company probably will move towards making 450 million a year or, or more. Uh, then market cap is probably 3.1, 3. 3. I think. If so it's a sub 10. Yeah. 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 And then because because we have faith in the management that um, they will do the right thing on the capital location. Mm. There, are, there are two things. One is they have the right business smell. The yeah. second is after they earn money, what they do with it. Mm. So, right thing means, if uh, 
the project are not for far to do. There's no point to grow for the sake of growing. Mm. Then the capital, I believe uh, a big chunk of it will throw back. Mm. 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 So, um, but then if, what if they found something very good to do? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But this kind of business is not something that is a, you grow like a straight line. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not linear. Yeah. It's not linear. It's a staggered one. So yeah. you find you got the one project, uh, then maybe you may have another project, mm. which may be even bigger or same size or whatever. Yeah. Then it's a staggered. Yeah. Right. So, but then the 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 thing is that we are confident is that they, they won't do stupid things. Uh. Mm. Right. Because they're great uh, they, capital allocators in somewhat. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, before we move on, just last question, right? So, what do you think is a fair price for this? I know it's a million dollar question. <laughs> What's a fair <laughs> yeah, valuation? I, I, I don't want to give a target price. Huh? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so, so it's yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. but, but 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 I can share is the uh, the operating cash flow uh, last year is um, three probably three eight. Okay, yeah. no, no, it's probably slightly less than that because some receivable delay by one month, but yeah, but. The normal line of printing cash flow last year would be would be would be around three eighty, I think. Mm, so mm. um this year slightly higher, maybe another forty or something. But then um uh, the fifth buy will come in. So mm. then uh, that's where the jump will then it move it'll move it towards about five hundred, yeah. So so about five hundred million printing cash flow for, for roughly twenty five years. So then, then, ah, then how much how much you think um, a five hundred million cash flow per year? Over twenty five years period, uh, yeah. worth today. So yeah. that is the DCF way of thinking. Yeah. Uh, MPB yeah. were thinking. Yeah, that's one way. Then, but then Malaysian market may just think ah, nine times B, ten times B, eleven times B. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> that's another way, mm-hmm. Yeah. The the concession. I'm guessing it's a concession. I'm not studying. Yeah, it yeah. is. Uh, uh, how how long is the concession? Twenty five. Um, I think it's starting. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's starting um October last year. Okay. Count, counting, but they actually start the plan in January last year. But the so, concession only starts October this year. Yeah, so the first nine months oh, is, is, is free. Lah, yeah. So something like that. Yeah. So, so started October last year. Uh, just started only. Lah. So mm. we have about 25 years to go. Lah. Mm. So then 25 years times this like 500 million. Uh, so that is the uh, so-called total value. But then um, more importantly is uh, every year they get this, this 500 million for five, 400 million or 500 million every year. What, what do they do with it? Yeah. Um, ideally is um, the company don't become a cash holder. Uh, then, mm, mm. then then you, you defeat the whole thing. So yeah, it stagnates yeah. the company's mm. growth. Uh. Yeah. But yeah. at least with the management in there, we we, we, we believe uh, unlikely to become like that. Uh. Yeah, because based <laughs> yeah. on what you're telling us, coconut, solar, <coughs> all these kind of things. This this guy sounds like, I mean, I'm, I've not read anything about Mega First. I mean, we first heard it from someone else as well. But it, this guy sounds like he doesn't sit still, you know. <laughs> it's like everything <laughs> they is, don't, yeah. yeah. And the coconut is not still stopping at the plantation, so yeah. it's going downstream also. Mm. So, um, yeah, no, it's not. It, it won't be so soon. Like, it'll be many years down the road. Yeah, but, but um, I think he thinks very long term as well. Uh, five, ten years old. So, yeah. so if you, the, the why is the best investment is uh one that I can buy and then do nothing for 10, 20 years. Uh, yeah. Then they compound twenty percent a year or something. Then, yeah. That will be the best already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they can go holiday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, just kidding. So yeah. uh that's the best. Uh. So ho- hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think of the other business then? Uh, you're saying he has another business called uh DNO, is that right? Yeah. Okay, I I I cannot uh say um too much on that because I, I do not know enough okay, okay, <laughs> to okay. comment a lot, uh mm. I think. Um but from what I know is uh is extremely well run. Mm. Just like all his other businesses. Mm. <laughs> so uh um KC, the CEO is extremely good manager. Mm. So mm. down to earth, very hardworking, so mm. high integrity. So run still the ship very well. Mm. Um they have complete advantage. Mm. They are much lower cost than all the other competitors. Mm. They are more innovative, despite smaller, more R and D. Mm. Have some product that people don't have. Mm. So, these are the things. Uh, that's why they do so well. I um, see. And likely they should do quite well. I see. So, yeah. So, but then, but then you the way that the the, the question that I have actually is. This is LED industry. Yeah. Something totally different. Yeah. That one is hydro. <laughs> and then 
And then, if you go in Google, you can find <laughs> the musical. He also on brewery in Cambodia. So, so the thing, the point here is, you can run multiple business mm. to the extremely good kind of situation. Yeah. 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 So it, it's kind of, kind of interesting to have such businessmen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It is very very rare, la, I would say. Yeah. It, it is. It is rare. La. I have not come across that many. Yeah. <laughs> um, like that. Yeah. I think it goes back to the point you said about Robert Quart's book. You know, I, I was very impressed with Robert Quart. Actually, the key that I got was he manages relationship very well, and it actually sharpens the point that you, what you said about manage your business people well because he doesn't see them as employees in a way. He sees them as partners in his growth of business. Would that be fair for me to say? Yeah, yeah. I cannot speak for him. Yeah, but then I can. From my observation, it's like. Mr. Kogun Hong, the Wilma. Uh, ah, Wilma, yeah. Yeah, it's like, he's an extremely good businessman. Yeah. And probably, probably there's a reason why, in the end, Robocop injected his uh, business for the, in the for the share of Wilma, mm. saying that, yeah, you run it. La. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, probably, yeah, he know how to appreciate good businessmen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember watching this war movie once. I, I told you about yeah, it. He yeah. said that the, he asked this this general, the big general, right? Uh, you speak Mandarin, so the Ta Chiang Jun, right? <laughs> so he say, okay, what's the what's the role? What's the job of a uh, of a uh, Ta Chiang Jun? Then the re, his generals replied, no, it's to manage the army. They said no, <laughs> the Ta Chiang Jun is there to manage the Chiang Jun, the generals. <laughs> so I think this is I think somewhat very related. Apt, yeah, to, very apt to. So yeah. where Robert Robert Kwong is uh, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, okay, we talk about stocks really. Um, we I think only a couple of questions left. Mm. So now let's go to talk about ma- managing public money, right? Um, now we talk about the section of okay, anyone here listening who wants to actually start managing public money and what what what's it like? Because you came from an analyst background, managing your company's money that they get from investors and then now it's direct you are the cio so what has that what are some of the key differences managing public money and then your own money um i think what i do is here is um i sort of like choose customer Mm. uh, Mm. that i want people with the same kind of a wavelength and Think long term. Mm. Uh, because you see the thing we do here is I buy one stock, I think three year, let's say it can double or triple. But it takes time. Uh. Yeah. So if you come in today, tomorrow you want out, or next month you want out, <laughs> it, it creates a lot of volatility uh, to, to us. Yeah. Which we I don't want to I don't want that. That's, then then we cannot think long term. Mm. Yeah. So the first thing is uh forever for whoever want to manage public money, you, you have to know what is your investment style mm. and then uh choose a right type of uh, customer that think alike uh, and understand the philosophy. Mm. So that's probably the most basic thing. Choose your client. I yeah. understand. Yeah. Right. So, and then we set rule like uh, lock up and uh, so what's your lock up? Uh, yeah, yeah. Penalty. Yeah. Three years. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah, penalties. If Even you, better than yeah. Monish, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so if the, what, what is the penalty? Percentage of the yeah. fund or? But, but if you withdraw within uh, say first year you want to withdraw then we the penalty is 5%. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, it, then the but and then but then the money that the pen, the penalty money doesn't come to me. Mm. Uh, yeah. It goes into the it, fund. It, it goes into the fund. So oh, benefit all, all the all, all the <laughs> yeah, investor. Yeah. So far no one paid that. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 far so good. Uh, yeah, I, I, sorry, got got go, go one one person pay that, but he, she has his own reason mm, of, yeah, on, yeah. of needing that. Yeah. Mm. So of needing that poor money mm. at the point of time. Um then First one is choose your client. Um, second is um, you got to set certain limits, I guess. Yeah. So, because uh, you yourself, if you own money, you you can do whatever you like, lah. Yeah, one hundred percent in one song. Mm-hmm. Uh, then um, but you manage for a, a pool of people. You you you, you I think it's, you shouldn't do that. Understand. But then. So you have to set a, li- a limit where you feel comfortable and they feel comfortable to <laughs> because uh, it also doesn't to me it doesn't make sense to be like you must buy thirty stock three percent yeah. each <laughs> yeah right? because then then your best idea you also buy three percent it's yeah. it's very ch- then then they also defeat the purpose of investment yeah that's how I feel <laughs> yeah. yeah so um 
manage manage expectations. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. So give 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 them a realistically slightly lower expectation. Mm-hmm. Uh, then hopefully you can beat that. <laughs> yeah. How often do you update your shareholders in a way? I, I'm guessing an annual shareholder letter. And then yeah. how, how often do do you meet up with them either as a group or individually? How often? Uh? Yeah. Uh, is this something you said or something I, more no, they come and see you in a way? No, I I, I go and see them. Okay. <laughs> so um, it's, it's, um, by now, they all become friends already. I see. So it ends at when I, I need to go to KL, I need to go to Penang, or I need uh, to go to Singapore. And then okay. they say, oh yeah, I have some time. Then we, we catch up. So a couple of times a year. Okay. Maybe, right. Some, some, some. It depends. Some some of them I don't even some of them I don't see them for five years already. <laughs> so <laughs> so it really depends, one. So yeah. some some people pref- uh want I mean uh, we can talk more. I mean anyway we are friends. So yeah. it's just that to chat lah. So okay. that, there's not nothing nothing more than that. Yeah. I see. I see. So if someone wants to work for Oakland Spa, yeah, what, what does he need? How do you hire even? <laughs> Um no we, we don't hire um but um if I okay actually we 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 are in the we are getting someone in but it's not really a hiring it's like work with partnership mm. rather than work for us uh, right, yeah. I think yeah so um I I want the person to naturally curious about things mm. uh, inquisitive have. Learn about learn um, learn about investment himself, mm. Uh, mm. um, and then share the same wavelength, mm. and then uh, has some proven track record. Mm. Uh, mm. We I I don't think I can train people from scratch, I, and I don't know how to. Uh, so, so that that's what I seek for, la. So mm. recently I found someone that fit into that, mm. So and I, and I I I'm thinking it is it will be a work with relationship, mm. yeah, yeah, rather than work for, la. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I think one last question on, on this before we move on to the actual last question, yeah. uh, which is uh, AUM. Yeah. Right. We ask a lot of investors, they give us different answers, right? What is, so currently, what is, if you if you are okay to share, what's the current AUM for Oaklands and what is the target for, uh, what's a good amount of AUM that is good for fees? Yeah. yeah, for fees or anything in terms of investment performance and things like that. We started at five million US dollar. Mm. Um, now we are at forty. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, we don't have a target. Mm-hmm. It's it just uh, we we have a target on return. Mm. I don't have a target on AUM. So the purpose is not to grow the can, size, grow the size, and charge a merchant fees. That's totally not the purpose. Uh, the purpose is generate above market return mm. consistently mm. over mm. a long period of times. Mm. Compound the fund. Mm. Um. Even if from today onwards there's zero new investor come in, mm. I'm okay with it. Mm. So, the it, you, you just have to keep compounding the fund at a high high rate. Mm. There's a whole purpose of investing. Um, yeah. Do do your clients have a minimum uh buy in or not? Is, is there a minimum size before they can come? Oh, one hundred thousand US. Hundred thousand US. That, that is because. Because of the license category that we are in, I see, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Uh, and do you see? Oh. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, yeah. Sorry, go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, do you see your clients? Are they like mainly Malaysians, or do you see different? Yeah. Uh, both. Uh. Both. Uh. Yeah. Okay. You were saying something. So, so, sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So last question, right? Mm. What are some of the industries that you're looking at right now that you think have oh. really good? So uh, sorry about potential. the cable. Sorry, the, the cable. Yeah. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, industry wise, um, you, you see, we because because of the work that we have done for the last twelve years, uh, so there's knowledge about a few sectors. I would say uh, quite a few sectors. Then, um, you have all the, you understand the supply demands and all these or so different point of time it turns and all these. Of course, if you ask me, very preferable industry of I prefer come industry with strong consumer franchise. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So but then if they are too expensive at this moment you just leave it there first. <laughs> yeah. sure. Then mm. um but then you understand a variety of sectors. No then at this point of time it's seemingly it seems that this uh shipping is uh turning Bot- bottoms up yeah. and then yeah turning around so mm. and uh, shipping it covers container drive out and also the shipyard. Yeah. yeah. So then um all are turning around. So mm. uh 
And from the supply demands um, data that we can see so far, it, it looks to be maybe it's somewhat sustainable. Uh. So we cannot say that it will be very, very, very good. Mm. But um, at least it's probably not as bad as the last 10 years. Mm. Yeah. So, so in your assessment, why has the last 10 years been bad for shipping? What or why? What or why? Why? Um, it, it's simple. So um, you look at the order book uh, for new ships. Uh, uh, after, after China went into WTO, uh, China grew very fast. Demand for all goods, products, services, uh, good and uh, both dry out and also containerized shipping mm. move out. So move out at a very fast pace, like 7-8% a year. Then uh, then the shipping ma- company made a hell of money during the boom time. Mm. Um, then until 08, yeah. And then 09 hit GFC, global financial crisis. So before the GFC hit, uh, they make so much money so that they go all out to buy new ship. Mm. Yeah. So the order book as a percentage of split the time hit 80%. Mm. So then it's crazy. You almost double your num- number of fleet worldwide. Yeah. So, uh, and the new ship become very expensive uh, then at the, at the time. Uh. Then, um, then the market crash after GFC and then uh, China inject uh, one point, sorry, yeah. China injected four trillion RMB stimulus in 09 and help actually help a bit. Yeah. Mm. So you, the whole shipping industry recover a bit, yeah. then uh, continue to move. But after that, no more. <laughs> so after that, <laughs> after that, it becomes shit for, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for 10 years. And then everyone lose money actually. So yeah. everyone lose money. Some Someone bankrupt like Hanjing Shipping, the Korea one, mm. and Bas, and then uh, small one, big one, some bank went by, some, they sell the ship and then consolidation, they scrap the ship. Yeah. So all sorts of things. And then all then order book continue to be delivered because 80% percent order book takes like three, four, five years to yeah. uh, solely and then they delay or someone forfeited the deposit. All sorts of things happens. So then then so back in I remember back in 20, 2010 or twenty eleven. I cannot remember which year. But someone asked Buffett about shipping at that time. Mm. Then he say basically he say he think the over capacity he think the over capacity issue will take too long to is- to resolve. So oh. yeah. So uh, yeah, I remember I, re- I saw the interview. Then um if I remember correctly. La. So so then uh yeah, then I just pay attention to it. Eh? So then somehow it really lasts a long time. Eh? Mm. About a decade. <laughs> so so um lately it seems to turn. But we, you you see, uh, in this case like uh, we cannot say for Hundred percent sure that uh, definitely it has turned, definitely it has this and that. But based on the data and statistics that we have, it seems that it's changing. Mm. So the order book at the peak was eighty percent of new ship for the bulkers right about, mm. and then now it is five point seven percent as of February last this year. Mm. And uh, this five point seven percent will be delivered over a period like twenty four months or, or more. So, uh, so we can imagine it's not one in one shot. And also, uh, every year there's a scrapping. Scrapping rate you know, because of ships, you know, yeah. it's too old. You need, you need yeah. to scrap it. Uh. Yeah. So, so the net fleet growth um is not that much. Uh. Mm. Uh, then the demand seems to be coming back very strongly mm. uh, for all. Then uh, both uh, container and also the drive out. And then um, if US Joe Biden managed to push through the two trillion stimulus infrastructure bill, uh, you need to build a lot of things. Uh. You build bridges and all this. And then China, I mean, and then and the US now already don't have that much uh, factory left over. Mm. So still, they really go for in, infra boom. I think the steel also need to buy. So, mm. <laughs> so a lot of things need to be moved around the copper, the, all, all, all the all the materials. Uh. Yeah. So the infra boom may, the demand is already moving up. The infra boom may add a little bit more mm. to, to the demand. So, so overall picture seems that at least we can say maybe next two, three, four years uh, it will be better than the last 10, 12 mm. years, uh, mm. 10, 11 years. So this is the sector uh, at this point of time that uh, we pay a little bit more attention to. Lo. I understand. So any, any more? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. All of us want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's um, cyclical, this, uh, cyclical place. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah these are cyclical pay. At this moment, um, this is the one. So, okay. yeah, we, yeah, that may, I, I, I foresee that this year there may be maybe another one or two more will come, but then uh, we don't, we don't talk about sure. it now. La. It's a bit premature. I understand. Sure. Yeah. All right. Any more questions, John? No, I think, uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the podcast really. Yeah. And we, no, thank you very and much. And you know, yeah. our job here is to connect people like you to our audience who, 
essentially know very, uh, either know very little or they're just starting out or sometimes they're starting to gain some momentum in understanding investing, right? And, and, so, also, and also to to let them be aware the the level of the yeah, level yeah. of skills that they need to improve Absolutely. before they can really manage their own money well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. Actually, I, I, I usually we ask the guests at the end, you know, like where can we find you? Yeah. But do you want to be found in the first place? Yeah, do you want to be found <laughs> in the first oh, place? Oh, we have a website. Uh, that's it. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we'll put it in the, the, the show notes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. all right, guys, hope you all have been thoroughly um, enlightened yeah. right, by this uh, very interesting um, and, you know, quite frankly, amazing individual uh, when it comes to investing. Um, and, you know, if you like this kind of content, do check out some of the other podcasts if you're on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell. And we'll see you in the next podcast. See you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.